Hey everybody and welcome back to another Simple Science video. My name is Matangi and today we're going to be starting the new A-level biology revision series and this is just part one and we're going to be approaching the most basic topic in biology which is microscopy. So let's continue. So just some basic knowledge which shouldn't be really any surprise but um, just a reminder I guess so microscopy is the study of cells right so first let's see atoms and molecules make up cells cells in turn are known as the basic units which make up living organisms such as humans plants fungi viruses etc etc now it's no surprise that most cells and the structures can only be seen using a microscope because they are teeny tiny. They're in nanometers and micrometers and our eyes simply cannot cope with that. And just another tip, a small tip for people who are doing AS biology and in particular have practicals, definitely, definitely make sure you get your hands on a light microscope for practicals because it is super useful. You're definitely going to need to use a microscope sometime soon. So just pop into your lab and try to get your hands on one. So let's carry on with the next slide, which is about the first kind, which is about light microscopes. So the first kind of microscope which we'll be looking at today is the light microscope, which, no surprise, uses light rays. And if you've seen the word photomicrograph, it simply means an image which is produced by one of these guys. Now, you've probably seen this in your school lab and you should be familiar with it. I don't recommend remembering all of these labels, um, maybe just the main ones, such as head, eyepiece, um, definitely stage, base, coarse focus, objective frames or objective lens. You will be told which lens to use in the exam, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, if you can see, I don't think you can, but there is a glass slide here which you place the specimen on top there and then you usually stain it. Back in the day, I used iodine. I don't know what people use nowadays. And then you have a cover slip uh, to keep everything in place. And this is the illumination intensity knob or in other words, the thing which basically controls the brightness of the light which is emitted from here. This is just a simplified drawing of how a light microscope works and I'm just going to briefly explain to you which again you shouldn't need to know in detail but you should know how it works generally. So basically the light source from here emits light which is this which travels through this thing called the condenser lens and it hits the specimen. Now this condenser lens focuses it into a narrow beam so that it reaches the specimen not all scattered and then after it reaches the specimen it travels through the specimen and the objective lens is your main friend here. This is the guy that does the magnifying, the main part of the magnifying. And then it travels through, it hits the projector lens, which also magnifies, but not as much. It just mainly makes it clearer, I guess, but you shouldn't really need to worry about that. And then it travels through and it hits the eyepiece, which again, makes the image clearer. And it may be a magnification, depending on what you have in here, but eventually the image is projected onto whatever receptor here, which could be the retina of your eye or it could be a camera or a computer or anything. So it basically it depends on the light which travels through the specimen, which is then magnified. The image is then magnified, the light rays, and it travels through and it should receive, be received on whatever is on the other end. All right, guys, and now we're going to move on to the second type of microscope, which is known as the electron microscope. And I wonder if you could guess, it uses electrons. So instead of using light, it uses electrons. And an electron micrograph, again, is just an image which is produced by an electron microscope. Now this isn't actually an electron microscope, it's just a simplified diagram for me to try to explain roughly how it works. Now basically, it uses beams of electrons. And what that means is there is an electron gun and an anode. So when a metal is heated up, for example, it releases electrons. Now these free electrons, they form a beam. All right, so the electron gun and the anode, they form an electron beam, which then enters the cylindrical looking thing, which is a vacuum, by the way. Keep in mind, this is a vacuum, and I will explain why in just a bit. 
So as the beam is traveling through, it first hits something called a condenser electromagnetic lens, which basically is like a guide, and it just simply directs the electron beam onto the specimen, right? The specimen is over here laying on a grid. So the specimen is placed on a grid, and then there's something called the objective lens, which does the main work. It's what magnifies the image. So that's, the, that's your main guy in the electron microscope, right? And then as the beam travels through or travels past the specimen, it then reaches this thing, which is called the projector electromagnetic lens, which basically focuses, it's your focuser, right? Like the fine tune on the light microscope we saw, this guy is what focuses the image onto the screen. Now the screen at the bottom over here, it's a fluorescent screen. And the electrons, when they travel through, when an electron hits the fluorescent screen, it has a chemical reaction and the fluorescent screen in that area, which has made contact, turns white. So the parts which the electron doesn't hit stays black and the parts which the electrons do hit stays white. So it kind of produces like a reverse x-ray, I guess. Not a reverse, just something like an x-ray with a black and white image. And again, whatever device is attached on the end, so like computer um, records the image, right? So it records the black and white image and then usually stains and like colored graphics are added to clarify the image. All right, now let's get to why I mentioned that it needed to be in a vacuum and now let's get on to the next slide in which I explain why. So first off, the specimen has to be thin and okay, okay, wait, let's do it this way. It has to be in a vacuum. Why does it have to be in a vacuum? Because as I said, we're working with electron beams, right? So when an electron beam is traveling, if there are a lot of air particles, it's going to collide and it's going to scatter and you're never going to get a clear image or a sharp image. So it defeats the whole purpose. So it definitely has to be in a vacuum. And for that reason, the specimen also has to be dead because the water boils at room temperature. So therefore, if you're in a vacuum, the specimen's dehydrated and it has to be dead. So these three main things is what you need to remember for an electron microscope. I guess this are the disadvantages over a light microscope. And next, we're going to be looking at the two types of electron microscopes. Just like there are two microscopes, the electron has sub-microscopes. I guess you could divide it into. So let's see what those are. And the first type is called the transmission electron microscope. And this is the original type of microscope. So basically, the transmission electron microscope is the microscope which allows electrons to pass through. So you could see inside the cells. And the scanning electron microscopes is the ones which basically collects the reflected and rebounded electrons off of the specimen. So basically for this one, the scanning electron microscopes, you have a 3D structure of the outside surface of a specimen. Whereas transmission electron microscopes, you see inside the specimen. And for this one, the specimen has to be thin. And for scanning electron microscopes, it's better, it has an advantage over TEM because you get to see greater depths and you get to see the patches on the surface. I guess you get to see the structure of the surface and it produces a 3D image. However, the disadvantage of a scanning electron microscope is that its resolution, which we will get to in the next couple of slides, is not as good as the transmission electron microscope. So just keep in mind that the transmission electron microscope is the one that transmits. So I usually like to think it as TEM is the one that's T for through and scanning electron microscopes is just the other one which collects the reflected beams of electrons. So it produces a 3D image. And guys, just another note, the amount of resolution which you can get with an electron microscope is much, much higher than what you can get with a light microscope. So that's an advantage of an electron microscope. And that's the main reason why electron microscopes are used is because of their resolution capacity. And another thing is that you don't need to keep constantly focusing it like a light microscope. It would all focus at once. The whole entire piece of the specimen would focus at once. Whereas the light microscope, you'd have to keep tuning it up and down, up and down. Right? So just keep those advantages of the electron microscope in mind and keep these two in your mind as well.
And with that, guys, we're going to be moving on to something called magnification and resolution, which is very important. But before that, we're going to have to cover this thing called units, which I personally despise. Um, in the beginning, I found it actually kind of difficult. But in the end, you just have to, I feel like, memorize this, these four bullet points, this chunk of information, and you should be good. Now, these are the main units which you will be working in. Millimeters, micrometers, nanometers. Now, one millimeter is 10 to the minus 3 meter. One micrometer is 10 to the minus 6th of a meter, so a millionth of a meter. One nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 of a meter, so I guess one billionth of a meter. And to convert from millimeters to micrometers, so this guy, you need to times by 1,000. So to convert from millimeters, you times by 1,000 to get micrometers. And just really, I strongly recommend you remember this because when you work in magnification, you want everything to be in the same units, whether it's millimeters or micrometers. Now, keep in mind to do the reverse. So to get from micrometers to millimeters, we are going to have to divide by 1,000. So all in all, before we hit the next slide, just take a minute, pause, and make sure you remember this very clearly because these are the main units in biology for magnification.